Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a Fly Me to the Moon jazz guitar chord melody, and I'm going to break down how I did it so you can understand what it takes to play chords and melodies at the same time and start to work towards your own solo jazz guitar chord melody arrangements. Here's the A section of the arrangement that I made of Fly Me to the Moon. To grab a PDF of the tabs for this to follow along and practice with later, just click on the link in the description. If you want to skip to any part of this lesson at any time, you can use the timestamp links in the outline below. In jazz guitar, there's a technique called chord melody, where one harmonizes almost every single note of a melody with an appropriate chord shape underneath so you can hear and feel the melody and the chords at the same time. So I'll explain more as we go. Let's jump in and look at how I harmonized the first melodic phrase of Fly Me to the Moon. The first chord is A minor 7, and the first melody note is C, which is the minor third of the chord. So I need to find a minor 7 chord voicing where the minor third is on the top. That would be this voicing. This is the root, this is the fifth, this is the flat 7, and this is the minor third. This happens to be root position where the root is on the bottom. Now, one of the things we want to do along the way is make changes to chords so they're easier to play, so we can play them more relaxed and smoothly, otherwise the chord melody could sound clunky and disconnected. When changing chord voicings for this purpose, you can never change the third or the seventh of a chord, or the third and the sixth of a chord if it's a sixth chord. These are called the guide tones of a chord, and they are crucial for getting the proper tone quality and function of each chord. That means we can change the root or the fifth of a chord if moving one of those makes it easier to play or if it sounds much better. For a minor seven chord with the flat third on the top, I usually move the fifth of the chord to the four, which as a chord tone we call the 11, creating a minor 11 chord shape like this. If you don't know what I mean by the 11, do not sweat it right now. Just know that you can replace the fifth of a minor seven chord with the four, which arguably will make it sound richer and more modern, and in this case also makes it easier to play. Cool, we have our chord shape for the first melody note. Let's move on. The next melody note could be called two or nine of A minor. Those mean the same thing. Because we can replace the root, we're going to take this A minor seven inversion shape, where this is the flat seven, and then the flat three, and then the five, and then the root, just all barred on the top four strings, and we're going to play the two on top. The next melody note is the root, so we're just gonna keep the same shape underneath and move the melody down. The next melody note is G, the flat seven of A minor, and we could play this chord shape with the flat seven on the top, but I opted not to harmonize this note so we could more smoothly transition to the next chord. It's okay to not harmonize notes where the melody is moving faster or where it will be much easier to play quickly. This next D minor chord has the third on top, so we're gonna play this chord voicing. This is the root, this is the fifth, bard is the flat seven, and then this middle finger is the flat three. Then we're gonna take the five and replace it with the four, also called the 11, like we did on the last chord. Taking the five here, lifting it off so it's all barred. Minor 11. For this next melody note, which is G during the D minor seven chord, I am not going to take this shape and play the G note with my pinky here. That's the easiest thing to do, but it takes away the third of the chord and we are not allowed to take away the third of the chord. Instead, I'm gonna take this inversion of D minor seven where the five is on the top. This is flat three, and this is flat seven. The root is barred here, and the five is on the top with the pinky. And then I'm gonna move the five to G because we're allowed to replace the five. We get this sound, which is that minor 11 sound we've been using. Okay, I'm gonna play everything up to there.
Next, we just play the normal inversion shape with the five on top because that's where the melody goes. So it sounds like this. Next, the melody goes to C while we're still on D minor seven, so that's the flat seven of this chord. Here's the inversion with the flat seven on top. This is the five, this is the root, this is the flat three, and the pinky has the flat seven up there. I like that shape and I use it a lot, but it's a little hard to get to. And once again, replacing the five with the four in this shape will make it much, much easier to play, especially because of the chord we're landing on next. So I'm gonna take the five, this lowest note, and I'm gonna move it down to four. Now, G7 is the next chord with the note B on the top as the third of the chord. Fantastic, look what we get to do. Just one note moving one half step. Just moving the melody a half step gives us a nice root position G7 chord and we're good to go for that one. Next is G7 with A on top. Here we took a standard inversion, flat seven, three, five, root, flat seven, three, five, root, and we replaced the root with the two on the top. And the root is the next melody note, so we just play that original shape. Everything up to there sounds like this. F, the next note, is unharmonized, just like we did in the last phrase. And we get to land from there on a root position C major 7 with the third as the melody note. Lovely resolution to end on that. Let's play those first four bars that we just walked through. What we went over here doesn't explain every arranging choice and detail and technique that I used in the rest of the arrangement, but it does explain the primary approach and a good 95% of what's going on. Now that we looked at some of the nuts and bolts, I'll play the arrangement of the whole A section one more time. Keep in mind that major six and major seven chords are interchangeable, so use whichever one is easiest to play when you're working on an arrangement. If you grab the sheet music to work on this, you'll see in measure five that I used an F major six with the six in the bass instead of an F major seven chord. I also want to say that even though I do choose very, very specifically in detail what voicings to use, once I arrange something, I don't always play it exactly the same in the way I might play a classical guitar piece. Instead, I'll use the arrangement more as a guide and mix up the rhythm and the phrasing sometimes and sometimes even break apart where I'm playing the melody versus the accompaniment. So here's an example of how I might play it if I loosened it up a bit like that. That's it for this lesson. If you want to grab the sheet music PDF with the notation and tabs, just use the link below. Give me a thumbs up emoji in the comments below if you want more lessons like this on solo jazz guitar and arranging chord melodies. I have a new video every week, so come on back and I'll see you next time.